Okay. Inshallah. So, the, uh, this phrase, Qala Rabbi Ajali Ayah, which comes in Ayat 10 of Surah Maryam, is paired. Uh, you find it in one, only one other place in the Quran, which is 41 of Surah 3. Mm. So now let's read these ayat in Surah Ali Imran, because then we will understand this better, right? Can everybody hear me? Am I loud enough? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> Inshallah. So here we have the story of the birth of Maryam, alayhi salam which is now linked to the birth of Sayyidina Yahya from the, from the phrase, right? So, uh, now, where shall we start? So we'll begin. Now, so let's begin. Uh, uh, let's begin with 35 of Ali Imran. Can you read? Surah 35 Ali Imran, so 3.35, page before, 3.35. Mm. Yeah. Bismillah. Yeah. Mm. Can you go on reading until yes. inshallah we'll continue mm. until forty one. Salama Wazatha Alat Rabbini Wazatuha Unsa Wallahu Alam Wuma Wazat Walaisa Zakaru Kal Unsa Wain Samaituha Mariyama So we'll read the English from 35 to 41. Now. When the wife of Imran said, O oh my Lord, I indeed have vowed unto you that which is in my womb sincerely for you, so accept it from me. Mm -hmm. Truly you are indeed the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Once she delivered it, she said, O oh my Lord, I have indeed delivered it a female. But Allah knows best what she had delivered, and the male is not like the female. And I indeed have made her marry, and I indeed seek refuge in you for her, and her descendants from Satan, the filthy one. Mm -hmm. So her Lord accepted her with a goodly acceptance, and caused her to grow a goodly growth, and Zakaria tended to her. Each time Zakaria entered upon her in, in the sanctuary, he found he found with her sustenance. He said, O oh Mary, from where do you get this? She said, It is from the presence of Allah. Truly Allah provides for whom he pleases without calculation. Mm -hmm. Thereupon Zakaria called out on his Lord. He said, O oh my Lord, grant me from your presence a goodly progeny. Truly you are hearer of the supplications. Then the angels called him while he stood in prayer in the sanctuary, saying, Allah gives you glad tidings of Yahya, testifying to a word from Allah, i.e. Jesus, and a leader, and a chaste celibate, and a prophet from, from among the righteous. He said, O oh my Lord, how can there be a son for me when indeed the old age has overtaken me and my wife is barren? He said, 
because Allah does whatever he pleases. He said, O my Lord, appoint a sign for me. He said, your sign will be that you speak not to men for three days except by sign language and remember your Lord a great deal and glorify him by the evening mm. and the morning. So there are other phrases also that you will recognize that come in the story, right? Uh, so the story is 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 linked. These these the sequence of ayat are linked. Uh, for example, Rabbi habli min ladunka duriyatan taiban. Here he says duriyatan taiban. Oh my Lord, give for me, gift me from you. Again, he doesn't change that, gift me from you. But here he uses the phrase, durriyatan tayyiban, uh, meaning uh, tayyib is good, wholesome, sound. Durriya is um, descendants, right? And here, here he says, Qala um, Rabbi, where does he ask that? Naam, here he says, Ghulam, which is, boy like child right so here ghulam is uh, qualified as dhurriyatan tayyiban so the so you understand what he means by he doesn't just mean boy he means a goodly son and other things also imrati aqiran right my wife is is barren etc now now the backstory is revealed in these ayat to how surat maryam starts the backstory is there was a very pious lady the family of Ali Imran. Huh? Uh, in English, uh, so we call her Hannah, the mother of Sayyidina Sayyid Maryam. We say Hannah. I can't remember where it comes from, probably from the Hadith. But Anne, Anne is the English version of Hannah, right? That the English name is Anne or Anna, etc. Hannah. So she was a very pious lady and she wanted to dedicate a child to the temple of Solomon, which is where present day. Uh, the Quds is built upon the land where the temple of Sulaiman used to be. That used to be a great temple. And for those who don't know, that temple, the actual temple itself is in the shape of the Kaaba. Right? It's a cube. And around that you have many, many, many other structures. Like in the, in, in the Haram, you have the Kaaba and around that many other structures. But the actual temple is a, is a small cube which is not there anymore, that was destroyed. And that will, we come to that in Surah Isra, how Allah destroyed the temple. So Allah can destroy it now. Is it within Masjid Aqsa? Yes, in that, in that whole compound. Exactly where within the compound, I don't, I'm not sure, and I don't know if it's known, but it is there. And it was destroyed, uh, Surah Isra will give you the story how it was destroyed. Allah was not pleased, subhanAllah, because he says that in Surah Isra. And then they, tr they could never rebuild it. And they are still trying to rebuild it. And this is why you have all the conflict there. Because now there's a masjid where the Temple of Solomon used to be. I have one more question. Now. The two ayahs we are comparing. One place it is night, one place it is night. Exactly, mashallah, very good. That's a good observation. So I was going to come to that. So it's completing. One is completing the meaning of the other, right? Here it says, here Allah says, you must be in silence for three nights. Don't speak to anyone. There Allah says three days. So now we understand, okay, three days and three nights. Three days and three nights, you're not to speak to anybody. You are to spend your whole time. And also here, Allah is telling him how to spend that time, right? You spend that time glorifying me and praising me and worshiping me. If anybody comes and speaks to you, you make signs, basically, like that, right? Uh, that's a, uh, he asked Allah for a sign, and Allah made him the sign. SubhanAllah, right? SubhanAllah. It's not easy to do that when people come to you to do that, which means Allah's Rahmah is upon him so that he can behave like that. It's very hard for you to make up your mind and say, I'm not going to speak to anyone. You have to say, Allah, make me like this. Then, then he can fulfill that. So he may, this is where he says, give me a sign. Allah said, you will be the sign. Hmm? Um, now. Uh, ah, so the Temple of Solomon. So the Temple of Sulaiman, uh, in, in, the, in the Jewish faith, from what I know, and I could be wrong, uh, only males are allowed to go into it, right? and to serve in the innermost sanctuary, 
right? This is the way it was practiced then. I don't know if this is what came down with the Jewish faith, but this is how it was practiced in the time when Sayyidina, Sayyidina Maryam salam was born, right? So the mother of Mary, when she, she wanted to have a child and dedicate her child to serve in the temple because they are a priestly family, the descendants of Yaqub, for the descendants of Dawood salam, so they are a priestly family. So she made this dua. Where was it? So she said, Oh my Lord, I dedicate. Uh, so she was pregnant and she made this dua, I dedicate my child who's going to come to your service. And he says, Oh, accept it from me. Huh? Right? And when she delivered, she had a girl, not a boy. Now what to do? Big problem. <laughs> So subhanAllah, the Qur'an is very, very far ahead of the times, you know. It's very topical at any, any given stage in uh, human history. Because even then, it's a problem now. How will a girl serve in the temple? So she said, once she delivered, oh my Lord, I have indeed delivered, it's a female. Uh, right? فَلَمَّا فَدَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَدَتْهُهَا أُنْثَى وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَدَتْ وَدَأَتْ وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْسَى And Allah says, of course I know what you have delivered. <laughs> right? Uh, and he, Allah emphasizes here, وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْسَى And uh, uh, the male is not like the female. Right? So that's, a, that's something we remember. The male is not like the female. Uh, and hence the importance of pairing. Because if you don't pair, the meaning is not complete. And we'll come to Jamal and Jalal from this, right, from this. The Jamal is, we say, uh, concentrated in the female, which is beauty, and Jalal, which is majesty, is concentrated in the male. But uh, to be a full human being, you must have both Jamal and Jalal inside you. So women have to be a little stronger, and men have to be a little more gentle. Then you become what you call a Bashar. A full human being, which Allah will uh, will define in the Quran in other places. So she says, "Inni samaytuha Maryam, wa inni oiduha bikabaduriyatiha min al-shaytan al-rajim." And I indeed seek refuge in you for her and her descendants from Satan, the Third One. That's a beautiful du'a, right? Because already, if this du'a is accepted, Isa alayhi will be safe. Right? Because she has made dua for the children of her child. Which is also a very beautiful thing to remember. That when we make dua, we make it for our children and, and their children, inshallah. And then Allah says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ So it's Allah accepted her, right? And, we, and accepted her dua, obviously, because of Isa alayhi salam. Mm. And caused her to grow a goodly growth, and Zachariah tended to her. So Sayyidina Zachariah became her guardian. Now, so it was a big deal, but in the end, because Sayyidina Zachariah is a priest in the temple, she has been uh, offered to the temple. Uh, so she was allowed to stay in the temple, uh, temple grounds, but she was not actually allowed to go into the the, the main, you know, like the Kaaba-like structure. And there was a lot of opposition from the other priests. Why is a woman being allowed to stay and serve here? Because only boys would serve in the temple. But she would clean the place and spend all her time there in, in prayer. And she was known to be extremely pious. Uh, Zach uh, and Zachariah, who was a priest, used to look after her. So what he did for her, he made a small shack, right, where she could be like a place for her to be away from everybody else in the temple ground, so in Quds, what we now understood, understand as Quds. And then Zachariah, each time he came into her sanctuary, right, and uh, each time he came into a sanctuary, and the word used here, Kullama dakhala alayha Zachariah al-mihrab wajada indaha rizqa, right, every time Zachariah uh, entered upon her in the mihrab, right? The mihrab, you know what we use that term for. The mihrab is the prayer niche. 
in all the masajid, you have the place, the little enclosure that's called the mihrab. So in her little place where she used to worship, she would always, he would always find her with food. And it is said that she would have all the best of uh, earth's produce, fruits out of season, mashallah, always there. And, and so he would be surprised. <laughs> he said, yeah, Maryam, where is this coming from? And she was a little girl at this point, right? Uh, so he would ask her, Qala ya Maryamu, anna laki hada. Where, where is this from? And he, she said, Qalat huwa min aindillah. That this is, she says, from aindillah, emphasizing, not just min, min Allah, you know, min aindillah, from, um, fr from Allah's, in, in a sense, like saying from Allah's own self, right? From, from him. So he, she emphasizes that. And then she says, Inna laha yarzuku me yasha ubi ghairi hisab. And then she says, Oh, verily, Allah will provide. Inna laha yarzuku me yasha for, for whomever he wills. Bi ghairi hisab. Without calculation. So he does as he pleases. Right? Now, so she taught him. She was a little girl and she taught him. That, oh, Allah gives to whom he chooses, right? May yasha, whom he chooses, as he pleases, without our, uh, our human limitations. Because if we want to have children, there are many things that have to take place. Uh, for Allah, Allah wills, it happens, right? So she says that. And she herself had Isa alayhi salam a few years later, right? So she, this was her state. She already understood this very well. As soon as she said this, Sayyidina Zakaria learned from her. She said, wait a minute, I am a prophet of God. I have been wanting a child for so long. Why didn't I ask in the right way? So he goes straight and he makes this dua. Right? And the dua come, we come to in Surah Maryam. He says, Hunalika da'a Zakaria rabbahu immediately. The immediate, and this is another thing we learn from the prophets. The minute they learn, they implement. And this is something the Prophet Muhammad taught us also and taught his companions. And the companions, peace, uh, you know, they, they like to learn a little bit and implement it. And then learn more and implement. Because this is the way the prophets were. The minute something comes to them, they don't hesitate. They're like, okay. I have learned, I implement. So immediately, next ayah, Hunalika da Azakariya Rabbahu, right? He went and he's called out to his Lord. He said, Qala Rabbi habali min ladunka durriyatan tayyiba. Right? Now here we are going straight to the crux of the dua. Surah Maryam, a little bit more about how he phrased the dua is given. Here he says, Qala Rabbi habali min ladunka. But here also he says, O my Lord, habali gift me. Min ladunka, from you. Duriyatan tayyiban. Goodly progeny. Surat Maryam, same words. Habli min ladunka. Gift from, gift me from you. Right? Not in any human form. I want it from, from Allah's way of doing things. <laughs> Subhanallah. Mm. And he says, Inna ka sami uddu'a. And here, uh, here also he got the answer. Immediately, this dua was accepted. So what are some of the conditions of the dua? Or some of the ways to make dua? One is what we learn from the first one, and I guess the foundation, is what we learn from Maryam, who was a little girl, and she also taught us that we remember that if Allah wants to give, He can give from where we cannot imagine. So when we ask Allah, we have to keep that in mind. It is not like asking so-and-so and presidents and great people and best friends and parents. No. When you ask Allah, He will give. Ask Him from Him. Right? Don't ask from, I want this and this from this and this. And this. Ask Him from you. I want it, min ladunka, from you. Right? Well, this is something, I mean, the Quran is there for us to teach and to be like that. Not to admire and... They are role models, so we should follow their example. Ask from, from you, I want. It is said about Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam, uh, when his own father, you know, we'll come to his story, which is very beautiful, but he, he, he opposed his father and he started worshipping one God. And his father had him 
uh, captured and they wanted to throw him into a fire, which was what they used to do. They'd tie people onto catapults and catapult them into this massive fire. So they, and it is said, Allahu Ta'ala Alam, but I believe it's true, that when he was tied on the catapult, Sayyidina Jibreel came to him and said, Ya Adam, I'm sorry, Ya Ibrahim, is there anything you want? Right? You're going to be thrown into the fire. And Ibrahim Islam said, from you? No. From Allah I want. I want straight from Allah. From you, Jibreel? No. <laughs> so this is his faith. And then Allah says, he said to the fire, Kuni baradan wa salaman. O fire, you become like cool ice water for Ibrahim. Which happened? He was thrown into the fire, but the fire was like cool. It was cool water for him. It didn't harm it, him at all. He walked out of that fire. So this is the faith of the uh, people who know Allah. And Sayyidatina Maryam was one of the best of those who knew Allah because she said, this comes Allah will give to whom he chooses as he pleases. So you go. So he immediately went and asked and he was given. And we come to the some of the beautiful uh, adab or the beautiful, ah, we had 19, the beautiful etiquettes of asking which can we go back to Surat Maryam, right? And here he said, Idna da rabbahu nida an khafiya. Ayah 3, right? He called Idna da, when he called rabbahu, his lord, nida an, a calling khafiya. What does khafiya mean? Khafiya is like, like, um, um, here it says hidden, but it's more from yani khauf. So you you have a reverential feeling towards who you are addressing, right? Sort of a reverential feeling. And he and he prefaced his dua. He said, "This is what I fear, right? I fear that my what will happen after I die. I'm very old now, but never have I been disappointed when I asked you." So why didn't he ask all these years for a child? He must have thought, my wife can't, my wife, you know, she's gone through menopause, I'm very old, this is impossible, right? It took Mariam to come very late in his life. She would have been born much later in his life. To te teach him, no, you are thinking in human terms, so you're not asking. Allah will give you from his way of giving, so you ask. Right? And he learned immediately. That's a lesson to all of us. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, first he states his fear. These are my worries. Right? Then he states his hope. But I've never been disappointed in whatever I have asked you. Right? So we say when you make dua, there are two things you should have. Fear and hope. You should mention those two things. Khauf. Half. Well, uh, my handwriting is very bad. Okay, what Okay. Uh, half. Okay, what Fear and. I don't know, they sometimes use this as greed yeah. in modern Arabic. Quranic Arabic, we use this as, not as greed, sort of longing, yearning, right? More like yearning. So, Quranic Arabic uses this in that way, right? Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah. Okay, so this is his fear, and this is... Uh, his his yearning, his desire, uh, and also na rabbahu nidan khafiya, a voice full of awe, which is why we say when you're making du'a, there is no reason to shout and scream. Allah can hear you. So when you make du'a, you make du'a sincerely. He was speaking sincerely. He was speaking sincerely. Mm. Now, and then that reminds me, khawf and tama, khawf and tama. These are the. Remember, I told you the seven words of the Quran. The seven words. Does anyone remember? Seven words. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So taqwa, tawakkal, tawba, sabr, tahara, qist, ihsan. So we covered, I think, tawba in quite a bit of detail, right? The last few times. So these two are considered the two words of Ihsan. Told you each of these divides into two. So Ihsan is Khawfutama. You become Muhsin when you have these two things balanced. So when you Khawf comes when you are witnessing Allah's Jalal. Sahih? That's true. When you're witnessing Allah's majesty, you feel constricted, a constriction. You will actually feel your heart being squeezed. It's hard to bear. It's very hard to bear. So you have constriction. Uh, tama comes when you're witnessing Allah's jamal. Right? If you're witnessing Allah's beauty, Allah's love, Allah's just pouring on you, you will find your heart will actually become, exp you, will, you will actually feel an expansion, constriction and expansion. You will feel your heart opening. When you experience this, it's um, unmistakable. You will know what it is. That you will actually feel like your chest is growing, your sadar is growing, and your heart is being filled with light, and you are expanding. Now... So certain adhkar, certain dhikrs we'll do, will either make this or this, depending on how we do that dhikr. What is it doing, son? Uh, qist, Q-I-S-T. Qist. Okay? So jalal wa jamal. Because when you're experiencing Allah's beauty, you are full of hope. Right? You're filling up with hope. Uh, so you have an expansion. Uh, um, and this also ties into how our life in the dunya is. Our life in the dunya is an intersection of happy times and sad times. There is no single person on earth, I think I can say I can guarantee, who has a completely happy life or a completely miserable life. They will have happy times and sad times because that is the state of the nature of dunya. Allah says that dunya is a place of mixture. It is not like akhira. Akhira, no mixture, right? You're going, if you get into Jannah, may all of us uh, enter there. N no mixture, just pure happiness for all time. And the opposite is true. And may Allah protect us from the hellfire. But dunya, the state of it, as Allah has decreed, is going to be a mixture. So you will, exp you will uh, experience both of this. And most of us go through life with our iman like that. Sahih? As we go through happy and sad times, our faith. Usually our iman is high when we are going through tough times. Sah? Which is why even tough times are a blessing. Because they take you close to Allah. And then when Allah gives you happy times, our iman will go down. Tough times again we start calling, oh Allah help me. Sahih? <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> That's true, right? But people who have knowledge or have good role models or good they try to make their life like this they try to do that okay so every time they have a hard time a constriction they will be taken higher they try to maintain that level of iman until the next tough time comes and they're taken even higher they try to maintain that so they keep rising higher which is why the prophets peace be upon them all had the hardest lives because Allah kept taking them high and after that, the awliya Allah, and so forth. So Allah gives hardness, constriction, takes you high very quickly, uh, more, than, more than beauty, uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, right? So, but these, these are all linked together. So we have the, the, the way to do this, instead of going like that, is that when you're going through a tough time, you have sabr, you respond with patience, and when you're going through an easy time, you have shukr. You respond with gratitude. 
then your life will be like that. So bidnillahi ta'ala, Allah can make this process quick or drawn out as it is good for you. He always does what is good for you and what you can bear. Because he has said, on no soul will be placed a burden greater than it can bear. And every person's journey is different. But he wants you to get back to where you used to be, in heaven, which is a very high state of iman because you see Allah. So you have no doubts in your faith when you see. When you don't see, you have doubts in your faith. Imam Ghazali uses the example of iman. He says, if someone were to come and tell you, so-and-so is in the house down the street, you may believe him. But if you were to walk closer to the house and you hear that person's voice inside, your faith will grow that he is inside. If you open the door and go in and see the person, now no doubt. Same with the iman, right? We know of heaven. Someone is telling us about it, but we haven't seen it. We have, but we've forgotten, right? It's nothing new. It's only a remembrance. No new lessons here. Allah says that. So this is why with our dhikr, we try to remember to the point where we are actually going back to when we were there. So to have this high esteem. So Allah will do this to you in your life with the purpose of taking you back to where you used to be. So even that is something to be grateful for. In, in subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm. Now, so khawf wa tama. So the four conditions... Uh, Mm. We say about making du'a for Allah to meet, for it to, inshallah, Allah will accept as He pleases. But one, that you express khawf and tama. You, you talk about what is it you're afraid of, what is it you have hope for. And nidan wa khafiya, your voice is low. Uh, and, and you do this in uh, private, yani, with sincerity. Right? Because this du'a was answered immediately. Hmm. And say that in Amariyam alayhi salam, she didn't even make dua. She had her food ready brought for her, right? In the Quran, there is nowhere where she, there, except in one place when she was struggling with childbirth, and it comes in Surah Maryam. But nowhere do, is it mentioned how she used, that she made dua for her food. It was just brought to her. So that is the state of her heart. She doesn't even have to say anything, it comes. And this is another secret of the difference between the dhakar wa unsa, the male and the female. Females, we say, have a very close, uh, can easily access the inner dimensions, right? Males can easily access the outer dimensions, which is why men find it very easy uh, to go about in the world. Women will struggle to do that. Uh, and women find it very easy to connect with their Lord in the inner. And men will often struggle to do that, right? This is one of the secrets. This is why we say women, when it comes to, uh, you know, in Sri Lanka in the old days, the men lead the prayer, but the women make the dua after the prayer. In African villages, it's the same thing. Because they understand, right, the 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 natural tendencies of the sexes. And this is why that balance needs to be there, the pairing needs to be there. So Sayyidatina Maryam didn't have to say anything. Allah knows what's in her heart. Food is brought to her. So I think everyone is a bit tired. It's Friday night. So I want to finish with uh, four places in the Quran where khawf wa tama come together, right? And how we understand that these are the words of Ihsan, inshallah. Uh, so the first place is Surat Araf, uh, 56. So the, that's the seventh surah, Ayah 56. Mm. Mm. Uh, page 144. Now, yes, please, Bismillah. Mm.
Allah'ın Can you read the English? And do not spread corruption here. After that, it has been certified and revoking out of fear. So, revoking out of fear and out of hope. Truly, mercy of Allah is close to those who have been excellent. So there you have Muhsin and Ihsan. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاهِهَا وَدُؤُوهُ And call upon him خَوْفًا وَتَمَعًا So Allah is saying خَوْفًا وَتَمَعًا This is the qualities we saw in Sayyidina Zakariya's dua. He said call upon me or call upon him خَوْفًا with خَوْف and تَمَع Right? With that yearning and that fear. And this is what Sayyidina Zakariya did. And then he says, "Inna rahmat Allahi qaribun min al muhsinin." Verily, the rahma of Allah is is close to the muhsinin. So the word of ihsan comes, right? So that's one of the ayat we use to explain that when you are a muhsin. And remember, at the very beginning, we said Islam has Islam, iman, wa ihsan. <laughs> Mashallah, that's very good. It's good. So uh, to be a muh, we know what it is to be a Muslim. Means you do your five pillars. We know what it means to be a mu'min. You believe in the six articles of faith. Ihsan, we said, is to marry those together. One of the qualities of a muhsin is they have a status where they are in khawf and tama at all times. Right? They are always walking on this earth, aware of Allah's majesty and Allah's beauty. They never lose hope, but they never think they can do whatever they want to and get away with it. Sometimes when we understand God, we understand Him with either too much khawf or too much, too much tama, too much beauty or too much majesty. If you understand God only with His majesty, you, you, you become crushed, you lose your hope, you become very dark and negative, you can't function, you're so afraid of Allah. If you understand Him only with His beauty, you think you can do anything you want, He'll forgive you. Right? Both of those things lead to a facade, lead to problems on the earth, right? So we, your muhsin is someone who is very balanced. And when you marry these two, Islam and Iman, you will find that in you, right? You, you will, you believe in Allah and you will not, deal, you not you, you'll be a bit afraid if you miss your prayer, right? You'll be sad and you'll be afraid. Sahih? Naam. So khawfun wa tama. Naam. It's very hard to be that. Most of the time we are going this way or that way. To be like that is to be upright. And that is when you become muqsit, when you have uprightness. And Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Sirat al-Mustaqeem comes from Qist. Mm. But Allah says, Inna rahmatillahi qaribun min al-muhsineen. Allah's rahma is close to those who act with ihsan. So to have khawf and tama, jalal wa jamal, both together. Okay, there are only four places in the Quran, Khawf tama is mentioned like this. They are also paired. Uh, so we'll do the other one and then I think we're all very tired. So we'll do the second pair, inshallah, next week if Allah gives us tawfiq. So the second, uh, the one that is very similar to ayah which we just read is in Surah Sajda, ayah 16. So uh, uh, chapter 32, ayah 16. Can you read? وَتَجَعْفَ جُنُوبَهُمْ عَنِ الْمَزَاجِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّنْ رَيْحْنَاهُمْ مِنْ سُحُورٍ نعم نريد؟ آه نو جاست إنجليش نعم وَمَا 
and their flags shunned their beds. They call out to their Lord out of fear and hope, and they spend out of that which we have provided from you. Mm. And then the next ayah also, if you can now, you can do the Arabic now. Allah Ta'ala.